officially in the riding portion of today's lesson. You will notice that there are no horses presently. We will get to the point where we are riding with the horses, but we thought it'd be more important today to go over what we want you to be doing when we are on the horse. So when those videos come and you are watching us ride, no one should be sitting passively watching as if it was TV. The instructions will be given in the video for you to move, but today we're gonna learn how to move. As the horses go around the arena, they are moving their hips and shoulders, which is moving their spine, and as you sit on top of them, you are moving with them. So we want to learn how all of those movements take place and how we can simulate them without the horse in these virtual programming lessons. We're going to start by just doing the walk. So the walk is the slowest gait. It is four beats. When we are doing the walk, what I want you to do is you're gonna fold your hands in front of you, or if you are like Miss Megan, you're gonna hold both your reins. I want you to put your elbows against your sides, above your hips. So we're just sitting casually, up nice and tall, core is engaged. Chin is up and eyes are forward. So when you're on a horse, horses can tell where you're looking and they will go in that direction. So we wanna be straight right now. We're just focusing on the movement of the hips. With your hands where they are, folded in front of you. At the walk, your hips are going to move forward and towards your hands. So if you watch me demonstrate, it's gonna be one hip coming in and then the other. So your hips are moving as if you were walking, but your feet aren't moving. So the hips are rotating in and forward. So if you're doing it on a ball, you're going to get a lot more movement than if you're doing it on a chair, but I still want you to practice on the chair using your core, making sure we're not using our back. So we should be pulling forward, not shoving forward. We're allowing our core to take over. Now what we're going to do today to make these movements habit and to build muscle because every time we ride, we're going to be building muscle. We're gonna practice our gates for one minute. So this timer is going to demonstrate the one minute, but if you have a timer with you, you can also use that. But I'm gonna flip this over. Miss Megan is going to demonstrate the walk on a chair and I'm going to demonstrate the walk on a ball. You ready, set, go. So hands folded, elbows in, we're rocking our hips up and forward. So one of the benefits of horseback riding is that the horse's movements mimic the human's movements at the walk. So as you are riding, you're getting that movement and those muscles built up. You're getting that blood flow going. You're loosening up your hips. You're loosening up even your spine. Everything's moving. So if you have a hard time walking, if you can only walk a little bit or you walk with assistance like a cane, this is gonna be really good for you when you're on a horse and it's moving you out. It's one of the good parts of the biomechanics of a horse. Their walk is work. All right, that's time. So we're gonna move on now to the sitting trot. So after you've mastered the walk, this is the next gait in English riding. The trot is two beats, and we move the horse, sorry, the horse moves on diagonals. So a front foot and the opposite back foot move at the same time, and then we'll do the other side. So it's switching. They're moving on diagonals, it's two beats. So when we are riding the horse, we are also riding in two beats. Now, if you want to sit, a lot of the times people will think, okay, I'm sitting on the horse, I shouldn't move, so I'm gonna tighten everything up and make sure that nothing moves. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> when we want to do the sitting trot, an analogy that I like to use is you have to think of yourself as jello on a plate. So if I move the plate, the jello is going to move. The movement of the jello is what's keeping it on the plate, <laughs> is what's keeping the jello all together. So when we're riding and we're doing the sitting trot, we have to find that fine line 
between stiffening everything up and just using the right muscles enough that we're moving with the horse and staying seated. So we're gonna put our hands in the same position, we're holding our hands, elbows in our sides, down at our hip bones, all right? We're still up tall, core is engaged. When we're doing the sitting trot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our hands quiet. Whenever we're riding, we should keep our hands quiet. But, I digress, hands are quiet. <laughs> we wanna move our belly button towards our hands, okay? That sounds a little weird. I'm gonna demonstrate the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. <laughs> so when we're doing this movement, it's the core pulling. It's always the core, it's not our back. So the core is going to pull and lift my belly button towards my hands, okay? So my hips are coming forward. What we should not do is get our back involved and move our belly button this way. <laughs> So if your shoulders are starting to get involved, try again, use the core. So we're gonna do that movement for one minute. This is gonna get your stomach muscles involved and it's also going to get your hip flexors involved. All right, we ready? Set, go. So we're folding our hands, elbows in, and we're pulling our belly button towards our hands by lifting our hips up and forward using our core and our hip flexors, okay? So if you start to feel like your shoulders are going crazy, take a minute, restart, try it again. But as you're doing this, if you're on a ball like I am, you wanna make sure that you're keeping both seat bones against the ball. We shouldn't be bouncing all the way up and down. That's too much. Just enough movement that as that two feet gate goes, we're staying connected and we're moving with it, okay? I can feel it in my core already. <laughs> and I ride a lot, but it's still, this is still work. Every time you do a sitting trot, you'll probably get a core workout going. This is why we do warm ups first, because otherwise this could feel rather intense. <laughs> All right, that's time. So the last gait that we're going to learn to do while seated on the ball or the chair is the canter. Now, the canter takes a lot of practice to learn. We don't teach the canter unless you've mastered other things. <laughs> so that's a whole nother, that's very advanced. But for the sake of building muscle and learning how to use our seat and become aware of our seat bones, which is very important to getting an independent seat, we're gonna practice it using these inanimate objects. <laughs> so this is not telling the future that when you get here, we're gonna be cantering off in the fields. This is to build muscle and to become aware of our body and how it moves. Every time we ride, we have to learn what is my right foot doing? What is my left foot doing? What is my right hand doing? What is my left hand doing? What is my head doing? What is my shoulders doing? It's a lot, which we will keep learning as we do these riding videos. We want to work on that now by building those muscles and focusing on how we move. So in the canter, your hips are moving in a circular motion. They're moving in a circular motion this way, not this way. So we're not doing a hula hoop when we're doing this. We're going to be moving this way. So when your horse is in a canter, they're lifting up and coming down every time they take a stride. The canter is three beats. So that circle's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the way that we're gonna practice this is when we're seated, I'm gonna adjust real quick. <laughs> when we're seated on the ball, and I am uneven, the ball's gonna always give feedback to where you are sitting on it. <laughs> so when we're seated on the ball, I'm gonna put my hands in the same spot, hands folded in my lap, elbows in front of me, I'm sitting up tall, head is on top, facing forward, when I'm doing the canter, my hips are gonna go down and forward first, so you're gonna push your hips down. Even though the couch underneath of you, the chair underneath of you isn't gonna move down, push against that cushion, push against the ball, and then, here's the hard part, you're gonna come up and back, okay? So we're making a circle, and it's gonna make your muscles wake up, okay? Are we ready? One minute. This one's gonna be one of the hardest. <laughs> but it's good to make 
sure that we are aware of what we're doing when we're riding. All right? We're going to go. Hold your hands, elbows in. We're going to make that circle. Now, this is a good one to make sure that we're keeping both seat bones connected to whatever we're sitting on. Okay? So we're trying to make sure that we have what's called a full seat. Right? So both seat bones are even and they're keeping in contact. So sometimes when you see people canter, they end up smacking down on that horse's back. While that may be fun for the rider, the poor horse is probably thinking, this is very painful, please get off of me. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are using our core, using our thighs, sitting up tall, to make sure that our horse is enjoying riding as much as we are enjoying riding. It's always a partnership when we're on our horse. We're working together to accomplish a goal, to move forward in everything that we're doing. All right, that was the canner. That one burns a little bit more. <laughs> so for our last one, what we're gonna review is the posting trot. So we did the sitting trot. We're going to do posting. So this is gonna have a little more adaptation. So Megan's gonna demonstrate how to do posting if you are seated in a chair. You want to make sure that your chair has armrests because you're going to do arm push-ups when you post. Okay? So she's lifting herself all the way out of that saddle, using her arm. She's not pitching forward. She's not standing up. She's just lifting. I'm going to use this yoga mat to demonstrate. Now, when you are learning how to do a post, you'll hear instructors, we do it all the time, say either up, down, or stand, sit. And a lot of the times people interpret that to mean do this. All right, so my knees are giving me a ton of movement, okay? That's not correct. We don't want to do that. <laughs> when we say up, down, we're talking about the movement in the level of your head coming up, all right? So we want to post by pivoting over the knee. Now, why is this important? Why is there a sitting trot? Why is there a posting trot? The posting trot helps balance the horse through turns. So we talked about earlier how a horse in the trot moves on two beats and on the diagonal. That diagonal is how they are moving and we're going to help them balance through that movement. So when we're doing a sitting trot, we're moving at a beat so that every time they're lifting one of their front legs, we're coming off of their back. We're relieving the pressure off their shoulders. When we're posting, it's a, little, it's a little less work for the core. It still is a workout, but it's a little less work. And we post alongside what we call a diagonal. So that's how their legs move. Depending on where we turn depends on how we post, but that'll be a whole nother lesson. What we want to do today is practice that posting so that when we're videoing on a horse and the horse is trotting, we know when to stand and why we're standing to help balance the horse. So as I'm posting, I'm gonna pivot over the knee and my head's gonna come up, down, up, down, but nothing below the knee is moving. It's just coming up and down, up and down. We're gonna start slow, because this is gonna be a big workout in the quads, but then we'll speed it up to the real tempo of a horse trot. We'll do that at the very end, because people are typically surprised at how fast that can be. <laughs> so we've got one minute timer. This is the last one, the last gate we're gonna do. So push through, keep with us. We've got it. On your mark, get set, go. You're going up, down, up, down, up, down. I can hear my knees cracking. You might be cracking too. <laughs> So whenever we're learning our diagonals, we want to make sure that we can keep our head up. As we learn, we'll practice looking down at the horse's shoulders to see how we're supposed to balance with them. But once we have our posting, we're keeping our head up in that trot. I said earlier why we want to keep the head up, and that's because the horse can feel where we're looking and they will respond to that. If your head's down, most likely your horse is going to slow down because you are applying a whole bunch of weight onto the front end of the horse, okay? So it seems like it wouldn't matter, but horses are very in tune with their riders. They can read our faces to know what emotion we're feeling, and they can feel our head. 
Alright, we're gonna push through with the fast trot. You ready? Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and time. <laughs> Keep it in free. It's not the easiest thing <laughs> in the world to do. So those are the movements that we're gonna be using when we are talking and on horseback. We want you guys to practice those movements at home so that you are getting the benefits of horseback riding virtually. All right, see you in the next segment.